What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I got for your face balls today we are going to look at two knives we're going to look at one fixed blade and one really cool folder or both of them are really cool actually so first up what I got for you is this guy right here this is the Pearson custom knives Titan and if you guys are not familiar with Pearson Custom Knives, definitely check them out on Instagram. Uh, the maker here, his name is Ryan Pearson. Uh, you can also hit up his father, Rodney. Uh, both of them really great guys, easy to work with, and you can order uh, a whole multitude of things. Uh, this model here is called the Titan, and I really like the overall design of this. Now, this is the sheath that this knife came with uh, from Ryan. And it's a pretty simple sheath, uh, Kydex sheath. It's got these two soft loops on it. It works well. Uh, not a lot of frills, uh, but, you know, I wasn't buying it for the sheath. I was getting it for the knife itself. So let's take a look at that. And here is the Titan. This happens to be, um, I spec'd out all the materials for this. So if you guys want to order a knife from Ryan, you too can uh, choose your handle material, color, uh, he's got multiple different models and if you want to do something um, you know outside of that I'm sure he would work with you but you can see there the uh, Pearson logo uh, it's actually uh, stamped into the blade uh, my model here happens this happens to be blue micarta uh, scales and then we have white and red liners and the blade steel here is 10 V uh, really super comfortable in hand you got this forward choil area and it's just a really great user uh, fixed blade just an awesome knife and the 10v is crazy durable uh, really really tough steel and i have i have not had this hrc but i have no doubts that this thing is going to be um, uh, just a rock star in the uh, hrc department just from my use of it uh, at this point in time it is held up extremely well so We'll do a few size comparisons real quick. And here it is with the Spyderco Manix 2. Here's another option with the Hogue, uh, Ritter Hogue. And then I've got another Hogue we'll throw out here. The Hogue Deca. Another red, white, and blue knife. And here is the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. So you can see there that, you know, it's not overly large uh, for a fixed blade. It's a good EDC size. Uh, most of the knives that Ryan makes uh, are actually smaller than this particular model. Uh, this happens to be one of the larger models that he makes. Uh, but real quick, we'll go over the dimensions. We got an overall length of 8 point, what's that? Eight and three sixteenths, basically. Uh, so it's eight point one eight seven five. Got a handle length of four point five eight nine inches. <clears throat> a blade length of six point one, and just a tiny bit. Um, cutting edge on this is three and a quarter inches, and because of that forward choil, so you are losing a little bit of cutting edge. Uh, but three and a quarter inch cutting edge. Handle thickness uh, up here is the thinnest point, and it's 590 thousandths. And back at the at the back, you get into the thicker portion that's 660 thousandths. Uh, blade stock thickness is an eighth inch or 125 thousandths, and it is a full flat grind. Uh, and behind the edge thickness on this particular model here is 21 thousandths. So, <clears throat> not uh, not the thinnest uh, blade ever but you know it's a fixed blade with 10 V um, you know it's really kind of a hard use situation you get a weight on this thing real quick so you're looking at 4.643 ounces uh, the sheath this doesn't weigh a whole lot with the soft loops you're looking at under two ounces 1.85 so making the whole package here oop uh, just under six and a half ounces yeah basically six and a half ounces which for a fixed blade like this is pretty nice so overall uh, you know it's really really great in hand oh I just noticed that I have some 
pipe dope. I was out on the job site today. So pipe dope, if you guys are not familiar, some pipe dopes are, uh, can hang on pretty tough. So you got to do some scrubbing. <laughs> Apparently I didn't do enough. Uh, anyway, you know, it, this thing's really great in hand, uh, super, super comfortable and just works extremely well. Uh, I am going to do a different sheath uh, for this knife. I just haven't had time to get it done. Um, but, you know, I'm definitely, there, there'll be times that I EDC this knife and I think it's just a great size and it's going to work out extremely well. And with the 10V blade steel, if you guys aren't familiar with 10V, uh, the reason it's called 10V, you're looking at 10% vanadium. Um, and it just, yeah, extremely tough really really durable uh, steel so I look forward to using this a lot more in the future like I said hit up Ryan uh, or Randy on Instagram uh, Pearson custom knives and they can hook you up with something like this or they may like I said make several other uh, knives I know uh, Ryan works with Nitro V a lot uh, so that's another steel that he really enjoys working with and you know make some really really sweet uh, knives in that steel all right, so let's move on to the next knife here. I'll leave the Pearson sit there for a bit. Uh, next one up is the Tepe Design Killage. This is a, a fantastic knife. I was really, really looking forward to getting my hands on this. I had it on order for quite a while. I had to pre-order it. Uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And for the most part, across the board, I really love everything that uh, Sean Hassan from Tepe Designs. He's just got some amazing designs out there. He does a lot of Tucson knives. Uh, the 204 Bronc is an awesome knife. Uh, the 177 Maverick, uh, the 136 Shockwave, um, drawing a blank on some others, but yeah, he's just done some amazing work and some really beautiful knives. Uh, the uh, Hornet uh, and the Hornet 2.0. The Hornet 2.0 is, is one of my all-time favorites. And the Killage is uh, right up there. I mean, the, the build quality on this thing is phenomenal. Um, and it's gorgeous to look at. The Damascus blade on this uh, is really cool. I really love the, the uh, marble carbon fiber uh, inlay on here. And just overall when you get a hold of this knife I mean it is extremely solid um, personally I could have done with the blade uh, being a little thinner uh, blade stock and being ground a little thinner but um, you know this thing is kind of a beast for for no bigger than it is I mean it is just super super solid I mean it feels like a fixed blade and yeah it's it, it's a well-built piece for sure so Let's get into a few size comparisons. Well, here, we'll throw it up against the, the Pearson real quick. So you can see they're, they're pretty close in overall length. Um, let's get the Pearson out of the way. There it is with the Spyderco Manix and the Hogue Ritter. Here it is with the Hogue Deca. And the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. So you can see there, uh, you know, pretty good EDC size knife, uh, at least for me anyway. I know some people like smaller stuff and some people like larger stuff. Uh, this is a pretty good in the middle uh, knife. And, you know, the visual interest of it is, is really good. Uh, dimensions on the killage uh, overall length is 7.9 inches um, you've got a handle length of 4.6 and a blade length of 3.3 inches you got a handle thickness of 592 thousandths at its thickest point um, it is a little bit thinner out on the ends but right in the middle it's 592 thousandths uh, blade stock thickness is 160 thousandths and this one is a, kind of a saber grind. Uh, it's not a full flat ground blade, uh, but this one here comes down to about 24 thousandths behind the edge. So, you know, as far as behind the edge geometry, you're looking pretty comparable to Spyderco stuff. Uh, weight on the killage. So for 3.3 inches of blade, it's a little on the heavy side. 
Uh, you know, basically just under 4.6 ounces, 4.598. Um, but it feels adequate. The thing has such a, a feeling of, it, it just feels so solid. I mean, you, the minute that you flip this knife, you just know that it's rock solid. Uh, a little bit of weight behind that blade for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, it feels adequate for what it is. And on this knife, you're, you know, full titanium frame lock. <clears throat> Tepe does some of the best clips in the game as far as milled titanium clips go. Uh, this one here has the uh, ceramic ball in it, and the balls actually move. Uh, they actually rotate, which is pretty cool. Uh, same thing on the Hornet 2.0. And this knife was manufactured by He Knife and Tool, so not we. Uh, but he, H-E, knife and tool in China, and the build quality is phenomenal. I mean, it, it truly is. It's every, I mean, it's, you know, I've handled Riots and I've handled CKF knives and, you know, all the, what people consider to be the best of the best in production knives, and this is every bit that quality uh, without question, and it just, yeah, really, really nicely done. Uh, we'll go ahead and disassemble this thing. So you're looking at a, a T8 on the pivot. And I think the body screws are T6 on this one. Yes, they are. So pocket clip screw is a T6. Now, I've uh, been carrying this knife for the last few days and been carrying it on a job site, which some of my coworkers are... Uh, guys that I work with saw it and were blown away when they saw the blade and stuff. They, you know, they're not knife guys. So when they saw the Damascus and how fancy this thing was, they, they were shocked. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's a really, really great knife and worked fantastic out on the job site. So couldn't have been happier with that. Uh, let me see if I can push this pivot through. Look, there we go. Um, this is pretty, pretty tight in the back. There's a alignment pin there or the pocket clip is, yeah. Man, that thing is tight. Let me see if I can pull the other side screw out of here. Yep. So that's, uh. That dowel uh, that's running across the back, that thing is really, there we go. Okay, so, you know, you can see here, that's one of the reasons that we don't, uh, that it's not lighter than what it is. Um, you've got not a lot of weight relieving, uh, some on the lock side, but on the, uh, on the show side, no weight relieving on the inside. You do have the, uh, the, uh, inlay on the face of it so you know they they have machined out large pockets in here for this inlay to sit in there um, the inlay seems like it's glued in so I'm not going to really mess with that uh, but you know I mean they could have come in here and milled out you know in this area on the back side if they were really wanting to get uh, down and dirty on weight relieving but it's still like I said it it doesn't feel um, Abnormal, you know, you don't grab a hold of it and go, "Oh my lord, that thing's heavy." Um, it feels like what you would expect when you see it in hand or get it in hand. Um, I really like the blue accents, the pocket clip, and I think I'm just going to leave the clip because it's really uh, on there. But the the pocket clip and the uh, uh, backspacer, uh, the blue color is a really good blue. It's a it's a dark blue, and I like it. I like the little little bits of color on there and all the way around it's just a, a really great knife um, you got ceramic bearings and nylon cages and you can see here that the Damascus is gorgeous the etching on it is fantastic it's polished um, just a really really nice looking blade I'm not sure uh, the composition of this Damascus you can see the Tepe logo right there but so far, um, I've, I've actually used this thing quite a bit. 
Um, not super hard, you know, I've just been opening packages and stuff and doing different things. Um, so I haven't abused it by any means, but, but I have used it quite a bit really. Um, and it seems to be holding up really well. So like I said, I'm not, not a hundred percent sure what the, uh, what the composition of the Damascus is, but so far so good. It's been holding up well. So let's start reassembling here. Now I'm going to, this is going to be a little bit different reassembly since I pulled, I don't have the pin out and it's on the top, but it'll work out just fine. I always like to build them from the show side up if possible. Um, it just makes it a lot nicer to stack everything up and not have to fight the tension of the lock bar. I'm just going to put a little bit of lube just on one side. There was already a little bit in there. And I am going to put a little lube on the detent though. And that's the other thing with building them up from the, the show side up. You can have a little better access to put a little lube on the detent track. So get the back lined up here. There we go. Get this pivot screw in. So all the way around, um, the killage has been uh, a fun knife to carry. Uh, for like I said for the milled clip it goes in and out of pocket really really nicely uh, and just it's a good size all the way around um, I just don't have any complaints at all you know this knife's a little fancier than I would normally carry probably um, I don't uh, carry a ton of Damascus bladed knives especially to work but, um, you know, this thing, like I said, it feels extremely solid and yeah, it, even though it uh, looks like a, a safe queen, it definitely does not, uh, have the feeling of one and it, it feels more like a work knife. So I really enjoy that cause I like to use my stuff. So not trying to abuse it, but you know, just using it and enjoying it is a good thing in my opinion, but to each their own. All right, I'm getting this last screw in here. Okay. You can see there it's perfectly centered and action is very very nice the thing you know because it's got some weight behind that blade it drops very easily even though it's uh pretty new i mean i've only carried this uh a couple of days so doesn't have a ton of use on it but but i think i will probably uh use this on the job site more um it's fared really well so far doesn't really have any snail trails you can't see any of the any of the uh, scratching or anything on the blade, which is fantastic. Uh, there is a little bit of adhesive or something. I was cutting some boxes today, so I'm sure there's probably a little tape goo on there. But all in all, um, it's a gorgeous knife. So anyway, uh, the two are uh, Tepe Designs, Killage. I can't say enough good about it. I love the thumb ramp. It does have a little bit of jimping up there on the thumb ramp, but it's very, you know, they did a lot of uh, tumbling on the blade, and so it's very muted and rounded off. I actually like that quite a bit. And otherwise, I mean, it just locks into the hand extremely well. You've got a really, really positive grip on this thing, and I think it would work well for smaller hands. Um, my wife handled this thing, and so did my son. Uh, both of them have considerably smaller hands than I do, and both of them really like this one. So... I think this is going to work for a lot of people and it's got you know an interesting blade shape and and just overall it's a cool looking knife uh the lanyard fans you do have a lanyard spot there on the uh built into the backspacer uh, that's not really my thing but you know to each their own 
Uh, the jimping on the backspacer does sit proud of the scales, so that you that does uh, interface with your hand and can't really feel it so much um, but you know I have such a positive grip on this thing I, I don't know that it's actually needed but it does look nice and it certainly doesn't hurt anything so all in all I give it uh, two thumbs up for sure I'm really digging the killage so I'll put a link up in the description for Tepe Designs website so you guys can go and check that out I'll also put links up uh, for the Instagram pages for Ryan and Rodney Pearson you want to check out Pearson Custom Knives. Uh, Ryan does, like I said, just awesome work and just really great to work with. Uh, you get a sheath with your knife. And I don't have the packaging or anything with me for the Tepe knife or I would show you that. You actually get a full set of extra hardware and a really nice pouch and a leather uh, morale patch uh, with the Tepe Design logo on it. So, you know, nice packaging coming with the Tepe uh, knife. The Pearson knife uh, didn't really come with any sort of special packaging or anything, but really nice knife, and they do have some cool uh, Pearson custom knife stickers. But definitely give these people uh, uh, a look and check out what they've got going on. Tepe does multiple different knives. The Hornet II, like I said, is, it's one of my all-time favorites. It's manufactured by this same company, He Knife and Tool, uh, and they're just doing phenomenal work. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're one of the only manufacturers that I've seen that consistently does marble carbon fiber with no voids or anything in it, which is uh, not easy to do, and they do it extremely well. Um, I just had a Riot that had marble carbon fiber on it, and it had a few voids in it. And I'm not, I'm not even knocking them for it because it's really difficult to do marble carbon fiber with no voids, but he knife and tool seems to be able to do it consistently. Uh, another one that can do it consistently is Tucson. I've had multiple Tucson knives with marble carbon fiber, no voids at all. So anyway, um, just pointing out those t little things, you know, all those little things add up to be big things. And, and that's really what you're paying for on, on pieces like this is all those small little details. And this is a, a what I would consider to be a really high end knife. Um, at a pretty uh, middle of the road price. They did a nice job with the lock bar relief cut and you know leaving those bridges in there it just makes it go in and out of the pocket nicer which is really fantastic. I mean for a milled titanium clip this is a uh, you know for those guys that carry their knives a lot <clears throat> this is definitely a one-handed in and out of the pocket. You don't have to you know straighten your pocket out or anything to get this thing to go in or do any kind of messing around this thing just goes in and out of the pocket the way you would want it to which is not always what I can say for knives that have milled titanium clips so Sean you did a great job on the pocket clip it works perfectly and yeah really enjoying it so anyway hope you guys enjoyed that uh, check these guys out they're doing awesome work and I will catch you next time have a good one